The Writers' Conference started in 1970. It was started by John Little, who was a faculty member here, and it quickly became a yearly event. Legend has it, um, John Little, who is from the Delta area in Mississippi, um, missed his friends. And so he wanted to create a, an opportunity for a gathering of readers and writers just to sort of make him feel more at home. People who he had gone to school with, people who uh, had become uh, mildly famous, and he wanted to gather them together. His personality was the kind that you never forgot. And so he was able to use that sort of personal Charisma. Initially it was a one-time thing. Um, he was going to do it for one year and then it went so well it became a second thing. And then suddenly the name of the Writers' Conference changed actually to start having numbers in front of it. It uh, evolved quickly into quite a showcase. Truman Capote and Eudora Welty and, and Edward Albee and James Dickey. I mean the biggest names in literature in the United States came up here to Grand Forks, North Dakota. And he got the New York City phone book and started calling every A. Walker that was in it until he tracked down the Alice Walker to bring to campus. Norman Mailer, uh, Scott Momaday, Louise Erdrich, uh, Salman Rushdie, Juno Diaz. It's the house parties that went on uh, that, that allowed students to come face to face with, uh, with uh, important literary figures. You, you look up from the, from the punch bowl and, and there's uh, you know, a, a long list of people. Almost every alum that I've run into has some story. Um, you know, the time that they went to dinner with, you know, whether it's Truman Capote or Salman Rushdie or, you know, Cheryl Strayed or everyone's got a story. The year that he brought the beat poets in, Lawrence Ferlinghetti and Allen Ginsberg and uh, Corso and, and a few others, and several of the Beats were having coffee and breakfast at a little downtown cafe in Grand Forks, joined by a couple of retired farmers who happened to come in there. And it was such an incredible sight to see these people chatting back and forth about, about life. I remember Louise Erdrich was here for one of the conferences, and she spent a lot of time, I brought a, a group of about, I think, 10 students down, we spent about an hour with her, and she uh, talked to students. Uh, uh, she, she, they shared some of their work, and she uh, was very supportive of, uh, of their efforts. My oldest granddaughter and her husband came to visit, and her husband was sitting in the, our living room, and he looked down and looked at me, and he said, you have a book here by Salman Rushdie. And I said, yeah, yeah. Can I look at it? Well, sure. So he picks it up. You know, it's signed. You know, did, did you buy it signed like this? And I said, no, I bought it and then went and asked, you know, Mr. Rushdie, would you sign this book for me? And oh, he was so impressed. You met Salman Rushdie? And yes. The most memorable time for me was when I had Raymond Carver uh, in my kitchen talking about, uh, about writing. And I, I just absolutely loved Raymond Carver's uh, short stories. And while he was talking in my kitchen, Jay McInerney, who had written uh, Bright Lights, Big City, uh, was uh, talking about that with my son in the next room. I've always loved it was just the access to the writers. You know, representation does matter. And um, I've had a lot of students say that being able to interact with the authors that they have been able to interact with has really changed their perspective on the world. It's a tremendous resource really for the whole region. Um, you know, you don't find an event like this anywhere else in the Northern Plains really that brings in such amazing writers every year. It's one of our signature events. It's uh, critical, I think, for connecting the College of Arts and Sciences to the community, the Grand Forks. Uh, it's critical for thinking about how the arts connect with the sciences within the College of Arts and Sciences. This has been one of the greatest joys living in Grand Forks to be able to be exposed to so many writers that I may not have heard of before the conference. Only a few I'd actually heard of before they came, but so many new authors and many of these authors go on to um, great acclaim. And it, you know, it, it made the university feel more a part of the community and the community more a part of the university. Uh, it wasn't two entities separated by several blocks of bad road. 